Hello everybody, this is All South Gaming and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. In the previous episode, we got rather lost in the hidden desert, because I wrongly assumed that was the direction we needed to go. It wasn't. But eventually found our way to where we needed to go within the underground water area. And found the hidden lab where we met with Dominique. How she keeps getting to these places before us, I can't tell you. Anyways, before we head back there, because I was actually debating whether or not we should take the, an episode to explore the uh, area that we haven't fully explored yet, and I'm, Lord knows I haven't, but then I decided that it would probably be better if we wait until I get the second to last uh, movement tech, which will hopefully be coming up this episode, if not this, then potentially the next. Uh, I say second to last because there is one more movement tech, but we don't get that until, well, the very end, pretty much the very end of the game, like second to last boss. So I'm probably not going to go after, uh, wait until we get that one to start exploring. But this last one will definitely help us. Anyways, reason I'm not in the lab is because I got a couple of quests to turn Have in. Have you learned anything new? Here's what I've turned up on the monsters. Good Get some platinum. Got any here's good And get some crystal. And with that, I will meet you guys back down here in the hidden lab. Okay, back in the secret sorcery lab. Uh I should note that I did get the resist slash from the Skyla, those clam enemies. And I also got... Ayamur, a club once used to slay a wicked sea god effective underwater. You get it from the underwater horses, whose name escapes me at this very moment. Oh, uh, Glashtin, I believe they are. Uh, I would highly recommend putting this on your crushing slot, because uh, it's going to be very useful in a not immediate but upcoming boss fight. Not the one here, but later on. Now, that guillotine blade ain't just for show. It will hurt you if you touch it. So, be careful of that. Also, try to not get caught by the uh, spikes. Lashmastu. Or Lamashtu. Has a 6% chance to drop Queen's Tears. 4% chance to drop Beast Killer. 10% chance to drop Queen's Tail. And a... Unknown percentage to drop whip expertise. Yeah, the uh, guide I'm using has some missing uh, percentages. Holy hell, that's a lot. And we also have to kill six of them. So, hey, works for me. Dark elementals. Dark elementals. Where is it? Ah, there it is. 4% chance to drop a diamond, 1% chance to drop dark matter, and a 4% chance to drop a resist darkness shard. Now, let's see. How much you want to bet? No. I was going to say how much you want to bet that uh, this is where we'd find a safe room. But no. Silk and an electric chair that we probably shouldn't be sitting in. And there goes La Mashtu, but I still need to kill it, and we get whip expertise. Increases whip damage, but I don't use whips, so eh, kind of a moot point. No, but we did get a fast travel room, which is eh, kind of just as good, all things considered. As you can see, except for the whip, they pretty much act exactly the same as the, uh, bunny morphs. Add lilims. That's what I was thinking of. And then we get a journal. Jeebel's efforts have supplied us with a large quantity of shards. 
Now that the children are well trained, we have begun shard binding experiments to great success. One girl in particular, Miriam, seems to have boundless potential, both in terms of how many shards she can wield and to what magnitude. If my calculations are correct, then we have finally amassed enough crystal to perform a great demon summoning. It has been a long and arduous path, but we will soon reach the end. My old friend continues to oppose the ritual. However, to gain much, we must sacrifice much. It is the most basic principle of alchemy. Ugh, everyone always talks about making sacrifices. We must sacrifice for the future. But more often than not, they're not the ones doing the sacrificing, or being sacrificed. Ugh, I hate people like that. I'm not even going to bother with any of these elemental creatures to try and, uh, get up close and personal with them. And we have a save room. I think I'm going to make a hard save here because I know that there's a boss coming up because I know, well, because I saw the door. And we are fighting ourselves. And it appears our doppelganger, who can lower our constitution, has a love of, uh, katanas. Also, she's not the boss you want to use crushing damage against. That's a later boss. Ow. Well, at least she doesn't have to attack damage. Didn't get me on the last one. Oh, that flame is bullshit. Well, got plenty of fried fish to work with. Stupid flame! Yeah, keep yeah. casting open the hell gates all you want, they're not gonna save you. Flamethrower, on the other hand, just might. Okay, I think that until I get a, uh... Until I get a better weapon, or can upgrade the Flying Edge, I think I need to switch over to something better. Uh... Thinking steel lightning. Yeah! Oh no, that's a great sword. Too slow. Crimson storm away! Okay, thought I was just out of range. Turns out I wasn't. Take this. Yeah. 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 Take this. 
How much health does she have? Pass for the fried fish. Crimson die. Finally. And that gets me a manipulation crystal, which is... Shadow Tracer. Create a shadow double. Hmm, suppose that could be a means of doubling up your damage. Ah, let's see... You know what? Let's switch over to the Silver Knight and try out the Bloodbringer for a while. It's a powerful blade. Okay then, continuing on. Uh, actually, maybe I should backtrack and heal at the, uh... At the save room. Just because. <laughs> okay, well, with our doppelganger dead... Let's just move on. Let's see if we can't find our way through here. Uh, hmm. Okay. Just gotta be very careful, and we get spike breastplate. Eh, give me a nice boost. Assassin's Vest could also be good. I'd lose a fair amount of defense against some attack. Now let's go for the Spike Breastplate for the increased uh, defense. Ow! Even though that doesn't seem to be helping me against environmental hazards. But that's fine. Wait, forgot to check the wall behind her. Very easily avoided. Ah, I was hoping I could just jump over the uh, blade. Got a secret. Another cut purse is ring. Let's see, silver chest. over here. Gotta be very careful because I'm close to death. Okay, that's just one way to get around. I probably should have been using the, uh, 
Silver Knight a while ago if I intend to use him now, but a uh, little late for that. Let's see, anything I could use for healing? Nothing that's all that great. Scrumptious. Scrumptious. But it's really all I've got. I know I have some potions, but their their power is just yeah at this point of the game. Well, that way leads to the next area, so let's see what's in here. Another silver chest with a diamond in it. Okay. Not gonna complain about a diamond. Ah, the Inferno Cave. I believe this is actually something that, uh,. Dominique brought up to us in one of her conversations about other areas. Uh, anyways, that was a flame elemental, or fire em elemental. Has a 12% chance to drop a ruby, 4% chance to drop Bix Bite, and a 4% chance to drop a resist fire shard. Oh yeah, the Silver Knight also has a chance at uh, blocking enemy attacks that would otherwise harm you. Uh, really don't have time to be fighting them. Well, I have time, I just don't have the uh, health at the moment. Can't get up there by any way means. As a par. As a par, as a par. Yeah, we faced these guys before. Okay, yeah, nope, I need to get out of here. And I need to get a lot more potions. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pause the recording here. I will be back as soon as is physically possible. And hopefully with a lot more healing items in tow. So I will see you guys in just a moment. Okay, pretty much gotten back to where we were. Uh, I did do some crafting. Uh, I upgraded the Silver Knight Familiar. And uh, also upgraded the Deep Sinker, which is supposed to increase our stats underwater. I've also switched over to the Doji Giri, which was more powerful than our, uh, our, uh, uh Bloodbringer, so there's that. Unfortunately, couldn't craft anything else, because it either required materials I don't have access to, or would require some grinding, which I've wasted enough time as is. Also, I'm going to be using the Aqua Stream for this area. Because, uh, a lot of fiery enemies. I also crafted some, uh, I will protect you. crafted some healing potions, some of which I've already had to use. Anyways, that is a Volcano Mort, uh, which has a 10% chance to drop a Demon Bone, 4% chance to drop Flame Mail, and a 4% chance to drop Resist Fire Shard. Ugh, I did not yeah. want to have to use up my high potions now. Oh! That was a Hellhound. Hellhounds have a 5% chance to drop Demon Claw and a 4% chance to drop the Summon Hellhound Shard. And Zapars, in case I haven't gone over them, have 10% chance to drop Platinum, 4% chance to drop Arehad Bahar, and a 4% chance to drop the Throw Spear Shard, though I'm fairly certain I've already gone over them. Huh. 
Shikari powder, huh? That was not worth what I just went through. Also, I did not uh, change up my. Come on. I will do it. Well, at least he went down fairly easy. Ugh, I gotta save some of these for the boss fight. If I can even make it to the boss fight. Let's see, that is a blood bug. 10% chance to drop a grotesque shell, 4% chance to drop a poison kukri, 5% chance to drop an inhuman carapace, and a 4% chance to drop the red remembrance shard. I will protect you. That's an odd-looking chest, and of course they can poison me. <sighs> come on, come down here where I can hit you. Oh, poison kukri. Can't imagine it's much better than my doji Gary right now. Yeah, no. Yep, death trap. Which apparently is cursed. And I don't have any means of countering that. Anyways, death traps have a 8% chance of dropping mahogany, 4% chance of dropping cypress, and a 4% chance of dropping the augment luck shard. I'm just gonna stay away until the curse status wears off. Any day now. Look out. Let's see, 500 gold from that. Where did that death trap go? There he is. Gotta kill him to get him into the archive. these guys if I can. Yeah, a little late on the draw there, pal. Flamethrower. Launch flames in the designated direction. Risk ring. Yeah, something tells me I ain't gonna be using that. A ring that sacrifices defense to increase attack power. No, thank you. Food. Ugh. I don't like using up all my high potions before the boss fight, but I have no choice. Should probably also use up a high ether. I will protect you. Yeah, these guys are like mortars. Ring. I was hoping for an HP up. <laughs> yeah, you're not doing a very good job of it right now, pal. <laughs> And there goes all my healing. Yay. I'm not going down in that tunnel while the hellhounds are there. Unfortunately, we can't get up there. Not even going to try. Yeah, another death trap. Seriously, how many hits does this damn thing take?
Oh, thank goodness. Okay, at least we got some healing. And there's the boss fight up ahead. Let's see, has a volcano erupted? The days are dark as night and the sky's red as blood. A very picture of how how long must this this uh, 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 how long must this go on? Our crops are ruined and the phenomena is certain to have an ill effect on the people as well. Perhaps this is opportune, a sign from God that the time for the ritual is nigh. The skies remain unchanged, and as expected, my superiors have called upon me to perform the ritual despite my friend's objections. His opinion carries little weight in the face of the guild's nearly unanimous support. I must away. The ritual will be performed ten days hence, and I have many preparations ahead of me. Hmm. Alright. Uh, let me edit this just a little bit. Get that spike breastplate. And why not? We'll use Bloodbringer. This is the enemy that you want to have crushing damage for. Guys. Yeah, it does a lot. Anything else, on the other hand, will do very little. Yeah, be careful with the flames he shoots out of his back. Saw that coming. Come on. I'd like to, at the very least, get this boss fight done for this episode. Wait a minute. What? Oh, no. I thought I saved right before. Oh. I'll be back. Okay, we're back. I will admit I used the cheat table that I use for grinding to get back here using the undead uh, script, which prevents you from dying. Uh, I will warn you, though, that using that script apparently reduces your shard damage down to one. Anyways, made it back to the save room. Made an actual save this time, just in case. And it wasn't 100% bad to have to go through that again, because I did actually get some new items. Flame Mail, which gives us, well, a major damage increase, thanks to the strength, and has better defense. Plus, it grants us some uh, flame resistance. And I also got some Bixie Bite from the, uh, I think some chests and maybe one of the Flame Elementals. Are the ones that drop Bixie Bite? Yeah, they're the ones that drop Bixie Bite. Uh, and which also gives us a good increase to damage, thanks to the strength. It reduces our constitution, but that's fine. But it also provides us with some flame resistance, which is probably going to be useful. I also made sure to make a save here, just in case I still somehow die against this guy. Uh, didn't bother making the doji giri this time, because I'm just going to be using a different weapon entirely. So, what's the point? Oof, we're doing a lot more damage to him than we did before. Honestly, when he's doing that mortar attack on the ground, it's probably the best time to hit him. Because uh, if you stand right in front of him, he can't hit you. What the? Sorry, forgot to turn off my uh, 
I've been using my timer that I also use for my videos for other things, and I forgot to turn off the alert sound. I'm not too worried about taking damage against him, mainly because uh, I do have some high potions this time. Mainly because I didn't have to use them to get here. And with that, he goes down, and we get a new shard. Invert. Use up or down, and press A to activate. Come on. Come on. What am I doing wrong here? Down, then up, and A to activate. Invert! There we go. And it basically Invert! rotates everything. 180 degrees. Oh! Which is something we are going to need. But, as much as I would like to continue on, as you saw by the alarm, or heard by the alarm, we are actually out of time for this episode, so I'm going to end things off here for today. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw polling to vote for our next Let's Play, which is still at three votes. Same as it was on last Friday, yada yada, blah blah blah. And if you could, please leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.